to uh, the session on uh, masking security and efficiency. Hard to read. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, there's uh, three talks. The first talk is uh, reducing a mask implementation is effective security order with setup manipulations and an explanation based on externally amplified couplings. So uh, the work is by Itamar Levy, uh, Davide Belizia, and François Xavier Standard, and uh, Itamar will be giving a talk. Thank you for the introduction. Do you hear me at the back? Yes, so yes. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I will talk about, um, maybe it's too loud. Um, so I will present our work, and it was important to know that it was supported by the ERC SORT project and the Reassure project, so the motivation is clear. Masking is a well-understood such an analysis countermeasure, and basically we split a sensitive vari variable into D shares, where D minus one of those are random, and we do the computation on the shell val shared values only. And we have the independent assumptions where we need to fulfill, which basically means that we need that the shared induced leakage will be independent, and then that they will merge linearly into form the total uh, leakage from the device. And basically, if you will take a simple example uh, with one bit shared across two shares, and we draw the conditional leakage distribution, then we will get two scenarios according to the secret, and we see that the mean is independent in the secret, whereas the second uh, statistical moment depends on the secret, and actually this scales up quite nicely in masking, so if we will have a D share, then we will need to estimate the D statistical moment, and basically that uh, means that the data complexity of an adversary grows, ex grows exponentially with D, and however, uh, and we denote by the lowest key dependent statistical moment the security order. And concretely though, it is quite hard to achieve those designs as we saw uh, in the session uh, yesterday. So we have glitches, which means that different shares might have different propagation delays into within the system. And we have memory transi transitions where uh, a shared might be loaded into a register. And then in the consequent cycle, we might have a value which depends on a different share loaded to register. And then we might have some leakage induced from this register which merge uh, uh, the shares and, and basically uh, these type of um, non-idealities um, can be kept under control in the synthesis or design time. So for example, threshold implementation can use non-completeness to prevent from glitches propagation and, um, and transition-based leakages can be mitigated by doubling registers or ad adding refresh, etc. So we denote those by a logical recombination. Since they can be um, prevented and formulated as logical conditions, and and um, sorry, um, and so recalling yesterday uh, session six. Um, in this talk, I will talk about something else, which is called couplings. It was recently reported by Thomas de Knud. Ah, okay. Okay? Okay. Um, okay, so basically it implies that we, uh, we have some electrical dependencies between the shares in our design. Um, they can be resistive or capacitive. I will talk about it in a second. So with this motivation, we understand that we, we have some defaults such as glitches and transitions when we, where we know how to handle them. We even have tools to do so, such as Maskberry for Elmo um, for simulation. Uh, however, at the physical level, we have those couplings and, and basically we don't know their extent or how we can handle those. Um, so, um, so I will start my talk. So what are couplings? Basically, it's electrical dependencies between shares within the design. It, they can be capacitive, so mainly it will be affected by the distance between the shares. They can be resistive, so mainly 
uh, 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 dominated by the power grid of the device and the distance again between the shares. The problem is that those couplings induce leakages which are not so linear and not so nice and they um, all ultra technology dependent so it is quite hard to formulate and model etc. So what we can control really depends on the uh, platform if it's software or hardware but basically mainly the distance between the shares, the shares and the power grid of the device. So in the context of side channel, an channel analysis, um, Thomas de Knud put forward that even when these designs are implemented correctly in respect to glitches and transitions, masking can really suffer from those coupling and how he showed that it was by placing um, uh, shares um, in different locations in the FPGA, so basically tweaking the distance between the shares and by that uh, uh, to get more or less coupling and um, in some cases it was hard to get significant coupling so uh, they needed to, to iterate a share in order to increase its leakage and then to get more coupling. So typically those kind of tweaks is something which is quite hard for, for an adversary to do, right, once a design is made and, and designers will typically aim to prevent. So this led us to, to quite a natural question. Um, even though we understand the re, the, these couplings are practical, is there a real threat without internal amplification? So can we do something from externally? So we, we saw this basic example and let's talk about physics. So basically an on resistance in a standard technology, so the current which is flowing through a share, the, the, the resistance, the effective resistance which it implies is something like 0 0.1 to 1 kilo ohm. Standard power grid on a device is maybe two magnitudes of order smaller. So basically our ideal model of an ideal power network which, meets, which fits this distribution works quite nicely in a standard case. So we ask ourselves, can we as an adversary add something externally to break this uh, symmetry? So basically we, we wrote down like basic and simplified equations and we see that the leakage with such an external, let's say resistor, um, will, will induce some linear factors and the recombination factor, what we denote by beta and it will uh, be multiplied by some nonlinear element. Okay, so um, in this case, we will get a non-symmetric distribution, which means that we have some information in lower statistical moments. Okay, so we had some approximations here, but basically, um, if we write down the equations and try to, to understand what we are doing, then if we want to get more amplification, we can either reduce the external voltage. However, this has some negative effects. For example, reducing the voltage will imply to reduce the signal to noise ratio. And then some point even the device will simply not work. So we can alternatively increase the external resistance in order to get more couplings. So if we do that at some point, um, the device will not work again. We will might need to simultaneously increase the voltage to put the device in a functional mode. So. The message here is even with this simplified uh, model, there is no trivial answer to, to, to understand what is the worst case scenario. It highly depends on the physics and, and, and for a certification lab, basically this implies that the exploration space uh, is quite huge for those uh, couplings. And then we try to generalize the model to, to D shares and, and, and to see what we get. So, um, so we wrote down the equations and as expected, um, we got that the leakage will depend on all statistical moments. Now this is not, not something um, uh, not expected because we actually solve Maxwell equations and, and uh, even with this simplified um, uh, model, um, uh, we can expect that uh, all uh, statistical moments will leak and, and the only question is, what is their extent or, or how can we get these amplitudes to be significant. And so our goal was to examine whether setup manipulation can reduce the effective security order and our explanation to that is based on these externally amplified couplings. 
And the approach we used was to try and falsify this, this phenomena and to see what we get and to understand whether the amplitudes of these lower statistical uh, moments can be made significant to reveal information. And we wanted to move on from a detection-based approach, which was taken in previous work, to, to exploitation-based approach. And for that, we used moment correlating profiling DPA. And the sole reason is that with moment correlating profiling DPA, we can actually see the contribution of each statistical moment and to see if we can get effective information out of it. We had two test case software and hardware. Um, in the hardware case, we examined the AES-128 domain-oriented masking design on a Spartan 6 Sakura G board. And on the software side, we, uses, we used the two shared uh, bit slice implementation of uh, uh, the Bart et al. design on an Atmel uh, Cortex-M4 device. So these are commercial off-the-shelf devices. And we didn't yet explore these uh, effects for ASICs or specialized devices. And so you have all the information uh, uh, here and in the paper. Uh, things which are important to, to, to note is that we used quite aggressive external resistance, external voltage uh, uh, levels. Basically, it means the device was on the verge of not functioning correctly in some of the scenarios. Uh, um, so, so, so this is not like standard resistors and voltage levels that you would work uh, with these devices. And moreover, we needed to keep the, the measurement environment quite clean and noisy and, and, and monitored. And we needed to remove many of the onboard capacitors to get our uh, hypothesis to, uh, to, to work well. So one last point before some results is that uh, the hardware implementation was an S-Box parallel design. So we couldn't really get to see the distributions because they are very complicated. However, on the software side, we had like this nice and serial uh, implementation, which means that we can actually pinpoint a point in time and see the distribution, for example, for uh, one bit leaking. So, as I showed earlier, um, um, these are the modeled uh, conditional leakage distributions where the, the situation is uh, ideal. We, the power grid is, is perfect. And then we took our software implementation and, um, and, and, and we had like a no amplification scenario. So one ohm standard resistor, uh, uh, standard supply voltages, and we um, collected data and draw the distributions and try to see what we get. So we see that our distributions uh, on the right side on the measurement world uh, were quite symmetric and, and very similar to the modeled world. Whereas when we started to amplify, so we used quite aggressive uh, values like 20 ohm resist, uh, resistor with 1.55 uh, volts as a supply, we see that the, we get the asymmetry uh, required in the distribution on the right lower side of the, of the screen. So, so basically, this gives us a bit of uh, assurance in the model that we have and the effect that we see um, uh, with externally amplified couplings. And from that, we moved on to, um, to some sanity checks. So this is the, just one uh, voltage scenario, 1.2 volt. We see on the left a uh, t-test uh, um, uh, uh, of the first order, and on the right a t-test of the second order. And we have many curves here. And so uh, the set of curves with the baseline um, uh, uh, notation there is just different measurement equipment that we see. And when we tweak the internals of the hardware, of the hardware design, so the spacing between the shares, we see this blue curve, uh, which then uh, shows us that with an internal amplification, we can get something from the device. And then when we aggressively play with the external setup, we can get significant uh, 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 leakage from the device. And then uh, going to um, a moment correlating profiling DPA, we see here uh, the first moment in different scenarios according to um, 
as a function of the number of traces. So first of all, we see that there were cases we were, that we were, weren't able to retrieve the secret key. Um, and, and after amplification, we were able to retrieve the secret key. And not only that, we increased the correlation values by a factor of 10, which then explains that it was uh, uh, done with far less traces. And there were cases where we already saw some leakage in the first moment. Um, maybe there is some internal amplification already in the device, but when we do aggressive amplification, we get it far faster and far uh, stronger with, with stronger amplitudes. And to conclude this set of experiments, we performed the success rate across 100 experiments in different external voltage and resistor sites. So you see here the success rate across the number of samples. And so from the right hand side, which means we do not touch the device, we work in nominal conditions, to the left side, uh, uh, you see that external amplification is significant, right? The success rate goes to one quite fast. Okay, so the soft, on the software side, we see quite um, similar uh, uh, results. Actually, um, on, the, on software, we do expect that we will get significant uh, internal amplification because if you think about it in a software design, there is a shared power, a shared resistor that goes all the way to the ALU. So basically it means that you already have some internal amplification to work with. And so an open challenge, and I will conclude with that, is that um, we only checked, of course, the second order, and we don't know really how it would scale for, for more shares. So we know uh, how the uh, distributions look like um, for three and four shares, and then we, we, we plugged that into our model with some reasonable values for external amplification, and, and we looked on how it's supposed to behave, and clearly, we will see that there is some asymmetry in the distributions and, and we can expect that there will be some information to, to extract. The only question is how uh, significant can we make the amplitudes of these, these couplings. Um, so with that, uh, I will draw some conclusions. So setup manipulation can be, um, or external uh, amplified coupling can give a significant impact uh, can lead to a significant impact on the security order, not only on the noise level as we uh, traditionally assumed. And we demonstrate uh, that off-the-shelf devices are sensitive, so uh, it leaves open directions to understand whether it also goes for ASICs or specialized devices. And how would actually the security order reduction scale with D for this kind of effects? And um, relating to the talks from the masking session yesterday, I think it is an interesting open problem um, to, to see how we can actually model external uh, or extended probes that really reflect such an adversary and things we can do. I mean, um, this is already something quite hard to model, so it is an open uh, challenge. And, um, and, and relating to the earlier talk that we saw in the previous section on, on, um, on leakage attacks, so basically I think that uh, this is a, a very relevant thing because if we have such amplification, uh, it will be far more uh, easy to, to verify and, and uh, 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 its effect will be uh, more relevant on leakage currents of devices. And I will conclude my talk with that. So please, if you have questions. So are there any questions? Yes. Um, Thanks for your presentation. Um, you made uh, all your measurements with uh, through power consumption measurements. A again, right? I yeah. didn't hear you. Sorry? If you can repeat, I didn't hear you. Okay, uh, you made uh, all your experiments with uh, power consumption measurements? Yes, of course. And um, do you have any idea how you could do that for like your, your amplification and your uh, uh, analog, analog processing through for electromagnetic measurements? 
For which kind for of what, measurement? For electromagnetic measurement. EM, EM measurement. Ah, okay. So basically you need to be active in some sort, right? So if you need to put something on the power lines to, to generate this amplification and you want to do it with EM, then you need to somehow bypass. You need to generate amplification with EM on if it's on the power grid. So on the power grid, you can do that also with with capacitance, if you have a capacitance on board, then maybe with EM you can affect the capacitor to generate those kind of, of behaviors. But if you if you strictly speak about EM in the conventional way, I don't think it's possible to do that. Okay. Time for another quick question. Uh, I have one. Uh, are your data sets available freely? Again, please. Are your data sets freely available? So there is no data set, right? It's, it's the, so you it's made just design. But you made right? measurements. Yeah, but measurement is easy to get, right? I mean, yes, of course, easy to upload. Okay. Uh, with that, let's thank the speaker again.